Okay, Hannah. So it was a, a big weekend in Ohio and uh, Ohio State Tournament, and they separated it into three divisions, three different sites. You attended with me, you know, and uh, we covered Division Three at uh, Marion Harding High School. Mm-hmm. And it was a different experience because <laughs> it was not in an arena. And I kept seeing the social media stuff come across different sites. Flow Wrestling kept posting the PA, you know, they had the PA stuff at the Giant Center. <laughs> Well, they had it at the Giant Center, but they it didn't, did not look like the Giant Center. It though. didn't look like the Giant Center, but it, none, nonetheless, it was at the Giant Center, right? right. Yeah. And I, obviously, I'm a fan. I'm still a fan of an empty arena. I'm not going to lie to you. Mm-hmm. I am. I'm a fan why? of an empty arena compared well, to a high school gym. Why? Why are you a fan of an empty arena? I think that it really, really, really. The kids get out there, the athletes get out there, and it's this big, ginormous, open air space that you're in, and it it affects you. It affects you. Now, I'm going to tell you this right now. Personally, selfishly, the high school gymnasium was good for the Millers. It was good for my two nephews who wrestled in Division Three, Wyatt and Owen. I don't feel like there was any of that overwhelming feeling, you know, and uh, that could have been something that might have affected one of them. And selfishly speaking, um, it was good for my family, but right, right. Overall, for the experience, I'm a big arena guy. There's no question about it. Um, that's just me being honest about it, right? Like I, I really yeah. feel like an arena as, is beneficial. As an, I agree too. As an athlete, though, like I, I don't know, empty emptiness like stunk to me. Like I was a female athlete, so let's be honest. Like a lot of my events, you know, we didn't have millions of people showing up to like I played girls soccer basketball track like you didn't have millions of people but when you did like as an athlete see I loved that like I loved the crowd like I loved getting into it so I think it plays either for you or against you depending depending on your personality so like you said for your nephews like they loved it they're a little more like introverted kind of don't mind having all the eyes on them all the attention so I agree but I think it can really swing some people like one way or another depending on how you look at it but there is nothing like sitting in a wrestling state tournament. Those fans, like wrestling fans in themselves are just a whole other entity. So to put everyone together in a big place is just something you always look forward to, I think. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. You know, I, I look at it and yeah, there's two matches, obviously. I was very fired up for three matches. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I got vocal. You know, I have to step back. And when you become a fan, I got to go over to the stands or I got to, mm-hmm. you know, take myself out of the scenario. And to be able to cover the tournament and to be able to, you know, be a media person and work 99.9% of the time, you know, I mean, we did hundreds of matches. Yeah. You did, you did uh, the amount of interviews and, and social media highlights you shot. It was incredible. Your output. It was just, yeah, that I think that a lot of that was, who is this Hannah Mears? Who is this Hannah Mears? You can't say that. Nobody has that. There's no. That's a true. That's a true story. It really went down like that. Who is this? And it wasn't just one person. It was multiple. But I think the output, you know, like working and then being vested emotionally, as you know, as far as my family being there wrestling, um, it's really hard to do the job. You know, it's really hard to do um, media stuff. Right. When you're worried about results and you're worried about them winning and and as you can see you know my nephew Wyatt he's pretty good you know he's pretty good and and it really obviously made my weekend and it having you there really um eased the burden on me and I so thank you I appreciate that yeah you're welcome I I I really do but the amount of output of your social media was incredible I don't know if you saw but WWE superstar Dolph Ziggler retweeted one of your tweets (laughs) That was pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> the old he might feel like the person with the most followers that's ever like retweeted something of mine or like commented on it. What is he so that got was right pretty now? cool. Is he like two point something million? Isn't something he? million. It's in the millions. No, it's and two, it's how over two million. It, it was the shot of Wyatt. So how yeah. cool was your nephew? So he had to be pretty psyched seeing that. Even though so the funny thing was you're I know you're saying like emotionally invested everything like First off, your nephew, I absolutely just love him. I walk up to him after his semis match, I believe. Semis match. And I was like, hey, Wyatt, would you mind getting an interview? Like, da-da-da. 
And he looks at me and he goes, I'm so sorry. Like, I want to apologize. I just don't feel comfortable doing interviews in the nicest way <laughs> I've ever had somebody deny an interview. And it's just because like you said, he's like introverted, didn't want to be in there. And I was like, Hey bud, no problem. It, he was the politest person I've ever spoken to at a tournament like that. And so I was like, you know what, like at least the stuff I got with him was like cool and people were hyping it up. So it was, it was deserved for him. <laughs> and, and what, okay. So the thing with him is obviously he's got an amazing story. It's an yeah. amazing story, right? Mm -hmm. You know, he had this traumatic thing happen to him as an eighth grader and you know, he, he blew his hand off, right? Yeah. And he blew his hand off with a, with a, a firework and, mm -hmm. and his story is amazing, but I don't think he wants it told. I don't think that he wants yeah, it to be and that's fine. And you know, what's funny. I would have never even asked about it in the interview because like, these are kids and like things happen to kids all the time. I would never be out there to put something out there. I was like, I just want to talk about your match and like you be in here, but you know, you respect the fact that sometimes people just don't want to be in the spotlight and that's okay. And at that point you don't even want the interview because you know, they're probably not going to tell you anything that people are going to want to hear anyway. Cause they just don't want to be there. It makes it awkward. So but I mean, incredible story, incredible kid, and look at the result. Like, yeah. I couldn't have been happier for you guys, for your family, and I was happy that I was able to capture some of those moments for you. It was awesome. The slow motion, the two slow motion, well, you did three slow motion, really cool slow motion videos of him. And you did a lot of really cool slow motion with the third place matches, a lot of consolation. Obviously, Olivia Shore, Olivia Shore is the story, she's the story of yeah. the tournament. I mean, yeah. she's a pioneer. She, she kicked the door down. Um, you know, and, and even Wyatt Miller winning for me, you know, still yeah. Olivia Shore is like it, it's you know what I mean? It's just like, it's amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. She's tough could, too. She's, she's tough. tough. She's not, she's not the, she could, she's the type of chick I see in the MMA one day, UFC and, oh. and people are scared of her when she steps in. Like she is that type of girl. Like you just see it and you're like, she doesn't care who you are. She's coming for you. I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to, I'm going to put this out there. I see a like what when Rousey when Rousey was up there when Ronda Rousey was was the toughest woman on the planet, and then the aura that came with her and how they built that right how they built that, I you know and Rousey I think was judo I want to say she was judo, she's judo I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, you know she's got a judo background. Yes, it's judo. I'm pretty so, sure it's that too. Yeah, and I think she's an Olympic medalist, and 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 they they really just built this Ronda Rousey hype train. I could totally see them taking Olivia Shore, and if she were to enter an MMA, she's gonna be a killer. Yeah. You know, and, I mean, not, you gotta understand. Yes. Ohio has, we have multiple UFC champions who are also state champions in wrestling. You guys, I think, have Phil Davis. Mm -hmm. Phil Davis won Bellator, right? right? Phil Davis won Bellator and Ed Ruth was competing as Ed well. Ed Ruth was Bellator, but and, and, but Phil Davis was the champ in Bellator. Right. But in Ohio, we've got the guy who made the ground and pound, Mark Coleman. Mark mm -hmm. Coleman was a two-time state champ for Fremont St. Joe High School. NCAA champ for Ohio State, world silver medalist. So we have a really good tradition of Ohio guys have really transitioned well in the MMA, Hannah, and, and uh, Kevin Randleman, um, God rest his soul, he passed away the night before Ferdinand was born. Um, great guy from Sandusky, Ohio, another Northwest Ohio. I'm from Northwest Ohio. Yeah, yeah. And then um, uh, Cody Garbrandt. Cody No Love Garbrandt was a state champ in Ohio as a freshman and a runner-up as a sophomore. But Cody No Love Garbrandt, you know, he won the one 35-pound belt in UFC in the last four years. So, I mean, we have a really so good roots, tradition. The roots are there. Oh, yeah. No it's sure, it's sure yeah. about it, which I think I could see her being about it. Like, the coolest part was, too, you're talking about, like, Ronda, Ronda Rousey and how they build her up, everything. This girl already has the persona to be uh, a star. Yeah. Like, yeah. you walk up to her. This was the most interesting thing. You never know what you're going to get from somebody, like I said, when you ask them for an interview, especially younger kids. Like, you just don't know what they're going to say. Not used to a ton of the media, whatever. So I walk up, I talk to her. She's like, yeah, absolutely. Like she knew she was there to get talked to. She was ready. She speaks so well. Like, not that you would expect people not to speak well, but I mean, for a high school kid, she knows what to say. She elaborates. She doesn't give you the one answer. And then by the end of the tournament, I talked to them, like her family and her so many times. My last interview with them, I had them all line up together. Mom, dad, brothers, sister, the whole thing. 
did an interview with them before it, Olivia saying, no, do this. No, you stand here. Like she was producing <laughs> this whole thing. Like she's about it. She's the real deal. She's, pardon my friend, she's badass. I don't care what anyone says. I think the statement with the, what she did, leaving the shoes there, I don't care what the haters are saying, saying she's not done with wrestling forever. No, but she just made history. She quite honestly changed the sport for a lot of women. And in a state that, like you're saying, is one of the most competitive in the nation for not just wrestling, but for athletes to go on and build barriers in these types of sports. So I thought she was incredible. I thought it was one of the coolest stories of the weekend. And it will be talked about for a long time because even sanction girls wrestling could be sanctioned soon. So she could be the only one to even get the chance to do it. You know, to kick the door down like she did. First off, she's got swagger. Let's just say that she's got like swagger and she, yeah. she gets like the branding aspect of it. She gets that, you know, she is a brand. Olivia Shore is a brand and she, and she understands that. And like we said, she's just like, she kind of gets it. And how about they hit the shores are insane. Do you yeah. watch the big moves? The shores hit. Headlocks, inside trips, flying bondinis, made up whatever, crazy scrambles. I mean, they are going for broke all the time. And in the match, in the match, actually, Olivia lost to go for third and fourth, I believe. She hit a headlock, even though she didn't win it, right at the edge of the mat. And I mean, if they were inches in, like, she was sticking him. So, like, keep in mind, Olivia Shore was hitting headlocks the entire tournament. Like, no one could stop her headlock. Not a single guy at that tournament was able to stop that headlock if it was coming. Oh, just the Burnsville guy. <laughs> Stephen from Burnsville second. beat her twice. Stephen's but the only one. But yeah, yeah, Stephen was the only one. I, 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 yeah. He's the only guy who beat her. Yeah. Stephen from Burnsville was the only guy to beat her, and he beat her twice. Yeah. Wait. And I'm, yes, no. but I'm saying, I think in that match. No, she, she lost three. She lost three. Stephen beat her two of the three times. Yeah. Regardless, he, he pinned her in the semis. He pinned her in the semis. Yeah, and then for fifth and sixth, it was it was a lot closer. Yeah, yeah, she's she's tougher than a two dollar steak. Yeah, she's she she yeah tough. she's nails for sure. I mean, but yeah, I mean, what else is there to say? Like you're saying, it could be it could be a one and done for uh, as far as the girls uh, placing in the boys state championships in Ohio. You know, depending on how fast they uh, how fast they sanction right. Like I told you about this Talia Guntram, uh, she like a middle schooler. Yes. Yeah. Sixth or fifth or fifth or sixth grader, maybe. Talia Guntram, I'm gonna tell you right now, Talia Guntram will place in the Ohio high school state championships um, in any division. She is really good, and she is going to be an excellent athlete. If she quit wrestling, she's gonna go be world class at something. She's an incredible athlete. So. Yeah, she could go That's be a I high think. jumper. Or she could go play basketball, yeah. run, tra whatever. She, she's an incredible athlete. She's Did 12. you know what it was? What, what, um, what really stood out to me was in my first interview with Olivia, I want to say, I asked her about hitting the headlock. And she, I think why she was so good at this level, she was very self-aware. She wasn't ignorant to the fact, walking out there saying, I'm just as strong as everybody, this and that. She knew she wasn't just as strong as a lot of the guys in the tournament. She just knew how to wrestle a match against a guy. She said, I'm not as strong. So heck yeah, I'm hitting those moves early when I feel that I am equally as strong. And then as I get tired and I'm not as strong, I can wrestle, she can wrestle the safer match. And I thought that was just so mature of her because when you look at her, you're like, this girl doesn't give a crap. She thinks, you know what I mean? She's just as good as everybody else. And she believes that, but she's smart about it. She doesn't walk out there the whole match thinking, I'm hitting this move. I'm hitting this big move. No, she's going hard in the beginning. She's being strategic and then wrestling her match. And I just thought that was really impressive. And I think that's why she placed and she is as good as she is. And she was able to make history. And her brothers are really tough. And her brothers are tough as nails They're too. Like really tough. tough. Which they and, also made history. So. And then they, they got a brother, Graham, that's at the Air Force Academy, a 125 punter. He was an Ohio State champ. Max joined Graham. Max was state champ at 120. Mm -hmm. um, and they wear barbarian apparel. So, I mean, I got to I gotta give up to that. We are – you are currently on the barbarian hour, Hannah. Uh, yeah. You must know that. I mean, okay, you got to know that. And um, actually what was crazy is I was watching a video today and one of the – one of the, the I believe they're the Vikings. I think they're the Vikings, Miami East Vikings. Yes. They're, they took that – not the headphones. Right. They took the that – Take the headphones off of it. Yeah. 
And that is the Viking on their singlet that the, in the finals that Max Shore wore. You're right. I did notice It's a that. gigantic, it it's like that big. Mm-hmm. I love it. Josh Saspi. Those singlets were cool. I, I kind of like they had you the, like the two The two-piece? Actually, um, Max. I they were cool. Yeah, they're cool. They're really cool. Because Max, I think better than the loose stuff. Like, they were tight, but they didn't look like, yeah, I yeah, get it. Yeah, the rash guard yeah. and the shorts, yeah. Um, but Max wore for his state championship match. He actually wore a singlet. Yes. Whereas they most of the time they had two pieces on. Right. Most of the time the Miami East, all three, all four of them. There's four Miami East there. They took fourth as a team, but there were four of them there, and most of the time all of them had the two piece on, like we're talking about the barbarian. And I apparel. think Cooper wore a singlet in the finals too. Then now you mentioned no, it. no, he didn't. No. Cooper wore a two piece. I was just I just did social media with it. Interesting. Yeah, and then. And then um, Max actually wore a two-piece. And then, obviously, Olivia, the whole time, she wore a two-piece. Yeah. She's allowed to, obviously, wear a singlet, though. Right. But I think it's also awesome to, like, to know you have a female on your team. And how much more comfortable do you think that makes her feel when it's like, oh, they're kind of – you know what I mean? Like, I'd, maybe you feel more comfortable in that as a female, too. You never know. So. Oh, I and it's it your brothers. Cool. And it's your younger brothers. Yeah. Yeah. You know? It's crazy. And then they had the 45 – 145 was there, too. So – yeah, I was really impressed with Miami's. But let's talk about the two-team race, the two-horse race that was for the championships. Uh, I mean, it was obviously between Legacy Christian mm-hmm. and then um, Milan Edison, the uh, Edison Chargers out of Sandusky Bay Conference. Legacy Christian out of Xenia, Ohio. Uh, I believe Dave Chappelle lives almost in Xenia. Just a little tidbit for you. I went to a, a Dave Chappelle show this summer. He lives in between Xenia and Yellow Springs. Okay. Fun fact for you. Sure, let's give a let's fun fact. To Zeb, Shout out to my man, Dave Chappelle. <laughs> He's still the goat. Um, but no, yeah, that, so they, they live right down in that area, down in that, like, um, they are east of Dayton. So Xenia, Legacy Christian, you know, they had just too many big dogs. And um, I, I would say Gavin Brown. I, I get, first off, Gavin Brown, shout out. Yeah. Gavin Brown. Go ahead. Yeah. He was the O-dub. I gave him the O-dub. If I had had another one of these with me, I had given it to him and Cameron Nokir. Okay. You wouldn't have given it to Wyatt because there was a bunch of – I mean, I know you couldn't be biased, but if, in my opinion, he would have been right in the ranks with that. No, if Wyatt was right up there, I agree with that. I I agree with Wyatt. And then, obviously, um, Max Shore was dynamite. Max Shore was dynamite. I mean, he was he was one of those people like you were saying coming into the tournament. You didn't hear his name too much there. He was he was show stopping to watch. You wanted to watch and see what he did. He was he was. <laughs> Don't look away. They're totally crazy. They do like yes. they do flat drops, headlocks, inside trips. I mean, it is like it's a highlight reel. They go for broke a lot, man. It is awesome, Hannah. Yeah, they're crowd pleasers, but. The legacy Christian guys, they are like, they are like another level up. When you look at um, Gavin Brown, oh man, I called him Logan Brown for a whole match. I was like, oh, I got in my face. <laughs> I was like, how do you mess up with the best guy in Ohio is in Division Three and pound for pound, like he's in the conversation. But he's really good. Yeah. Um, the reason he gets the OW is the team's built around Gavin Brown. He's mm-hmm. going to Ohio State. Mm-hmm. The dude is really good. He's next level good. Yes. He bonused everybody, right? He bonused, pinned, or majored everybody, I, and which Wyatt Miller did too. So I yeah. okay, but he played. That guy placed at Super Thirty Two. That guy was a state yeah. champ as a freshman. Looking at his whole yeah, yeah, his the whole, whole body absolutely. Of work, gotta go with Gavin Brown, and I yeah, you know what I mean. Like yeah, I, I'm a home carries, and he also he just cares just from like meeting him. Like I said, I came into this tournament absolutely knowing no one. So I did a lot of just like evaluation of character as well. He carried himself like a division one athlete from the minute he walked in the door to the minute he stepped off the mat. When he won, there was almost like no reaction. It was just like, I was supposed to do that. I came here to do a job. I did it. Like I was very, very shocked by that in a way because sometimes that aura can go either one or two ways when you know you're the best and that's who he was, man. So yeah. And then Austin Kohlhofer from Delta, I think he was 50, oh. 52 and 0. He, yeah. I, I thought Austin Kohlhofer would just pin everybody and he didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because he's 220. And yeah. 
it's an upper weight and there's a lot of pins at that weight, right? Um, the guys can't seem to, whenever he puts them on their back, they don't get off. Yeah. He didn't, um, he won, he's 52 and oh, he's really good. Uh, but he, I thought he'd pin his way through. Right. I thought he'd pin his way through. Um, he beat a guy from his district in the finals, but he would have been a guy that you, he's in that mix because Delta's kind of built around the Matins and then you yeah. got, it brings this guy up. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's another guy, but there's just there's some really top tier people, you know the um, the Ohio Pin King, no, Casey my Barnett, gosh. Casey <laughs> Barnett, Casey Barnett. I really enjoyed talking to him after too. He was yeah. a funny guy. I was yeah. like, that was his hundred sixty eighth pin. One hundred sixty eight pin. And he knew. He knew, man. I asked him <laughs> about it. He goes, Yeah, well, I got that name. Well, that was actually my hundred sixty eighth pin. I was like, Okay, go. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> and then, but what was crazy about it is Hersey from Newcomerstown, who he was wrestling, yeah. had a, had him in position to pin him. Yes, I yeah, I was asking him about that too. I was like, geez, but into Hersey, you know what? Hersey looked great that whole tournament too. He did. I did not expect him to get pinned, and I almost expected that match to like be flipped in a way. I was like, this could be really close. But Hersey. if it had to go some way, yeah, the pin king. Come the on. pin king was gonna get it. I mean. Yeah. Hersey, but Hersey didn't really, it wasn't like an egregious, oh, he had him pinned and didn't yeah. call it. He yeah. never was like in real danger of both blades being down. He right. was like through and then they, and then what was crazy is Casey's a cradler. Yeah. So that guy wanted to play his game and then he kept rolling him through and doing like the Kale Sanderson suicide blind cradle, the, the bow nickel blind cradle, mm-hmm. which you get away with it once. You right. get away with it twice. Maybe don't try it a third time on a spider. Uh, yeah, on someone who's looking to pin you and yes, who's pinning you. In 167 people. And he's and he's lank, like he's yeah. a lanky guy. Those are the cradlers you always see. Your traditional cradlers, you look at them, you know they're gonna go for it. So that's their comfort zone. Is yeah. where you think you have them uncomfortable. They're like, please put me there. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, no, yeah, and he like sits through it and looks through yeah. it, and he looked. Yeah. Oh man, and my favorite thing about him is he's always. He's always looked like a wet rat. <laughs> and that's I'm always so- like, dude, you're a wet rat. I said that about somebody else at the PWC event. And um, but that's really funny. Do you remember that? I called somebody else a wet rat. Yeah. Who did I call a wet rat? That's funny, but he does. That's so funny you said that. Who did I call a wet rat? You gotta tell me now. I'm trying to think, I can't remember who it was. Uh, Walk around I- videoing is the second PWC event, and you're like, and here he is, the wet rat. And you were telling me about like him and his brother. Oh, 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 Mickey Burnett. Burnett, yes. Mickey Burnett used to yes. look like a wet rat. Yes. As a kid, like as I showed you that picture from his mom and dad's refrigerator. Yeah. He's like got a mullet and he's <laughs> shoes are all big. Yes, exactly. Who I was Mickey talking Burnett. About. No, yeah, and that's funny that's because Kate, Casey Barnett and Mickey yeah, Barnett. That's Barnett, Barnett, Barnett. Barnett. That's why Barnett, I was second guessing yeah. in my head because I was like, maybe I'm just thinking of Barnett. No, no, no. no. <laughs> yeah, Mickey. Mickey would look like a wet rat as a kid. But yeah. Casey still looks like a wet rat as a high schooler. They're only a yeah. year apart. They're only a year apart. That's I funny. Think they wrestled last That's year. Funny. Man, I think those two guys wrestled last year. This is wild. But they're from yeah, the same club. Are... They're from um from uh Burnett Train from uh Mickey's dad's club is where Casey Barnett and Brady Barnett, well, who's maybe Casey's... that's like the style they just all feel like they have to No, go. because because the Burnett's are not cradlers. The Burnett's are barrel. No, I'm talking guys. about the wet rat style. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Eric Burnett used to look like a wet rat. Yes, yeah, his dad. The All-American at Clarion used to look like a wet rat. Correct. That's funny. 100% That's correct. But, but you know, there was a lot of people that stood out there, like you're saying. You know, there's a lot of people what, who were OW conversation. Yeah, and do you know what also was stand, was to ask me was when I was going over stats beforehand, just, like, getting to a feel for, like, okay, now we can look at this more closely. There was, I think, like, seven guys undefeated. Going for it. Is, he was undefeated. Uh huh. The Mechanicsburg so, fifty two. Uh, I can't. He got upset. You had you filmed it. So it was it was uh Pummel was undefeated. Pummel. Meyer Percy. was undefeated. Wyatt was undefeated. Cole Hoffer was undefeated. Uh, Max Shore I think was undefeated. Max Shore only had like fourteen matches or something though. Nineteen. Nineteen. It had, well once real- in a term. Yeah. Yeah. Horn, uh, oh, yes. Well, Hersey was undefeated but got lost. Yeah. Dick Campbell was undefeated. So there was a lot of them. There was a lot of them were undefeated, and they were also two or three. I think there were two that was, like, their first time in school history 
they were the state champion. Sevi Garza was the and the second time. Pommel was the second Pommel one. Pommel was the second one. Yeah. And then ooh, who else? Okay. Uh, what's his face was also Jarrett Hornish was the second one in school history. And the guy who was the first one was actually there with him. That's wild. Yeah, That's and awesome. I got them in an interview together. I don't know if you even had a chance to watch some of those, I watched the Pummel interview because everybody was talking about it. It was so funny. First, first off, I have to address that. This kid just won a state title. Let him be him. And it's funny because Luke and I were having a conversation the other day. Might have been when we were watching Big Ten. Maybe? No, because I wasn't with him. Address. Regardless, we were talking about personalities and wrestling. And we said, you know what? If you have a big personality – you want to be that guy who's like showboaty, who's out there, who's confident, do it, but own it all the time. Don't just do it just to do it sometimes. Like if you're going to do it, respect to you, do it. That's a kid who was doing it and didn't care. And I had so much respect for him for it because I was like, heck yeah. As we saw this year, why not make a statement, go all out, be proud of it because this could change at any time if this world, we know it. So be proud of your moment. He was, I loved it. Great interview. <laughs> okay. So what I got to tell you, explain that to you real quick, that what you just explained, how people will be one way, they will be one way. And then when the camera's on, they're another, yeah. right? We described it like fake it's, humble. It's, it's called a gimmick. It's yeah. called a gimmick, by the way. Right. And then, so for example, Dolph Ziggler, Nick Nemeth, the guy who retweeted you, his gimmick is he's a cocky, conceited, you know, from Hollywood, uh, Florida. And he's, you know, he's the God's gift to everything. And he's, he's the show off, right? right? So that's his gimmick. Yeah. But real Nick Nemeth, real Dolph Ziggler, the, like the actual guy. Yeah. He's from West Cleveland. He was a state placer at St. Edward. I wrestled with him for four right. year, five years in college. He was a three-time Mid-American Conference champ. Dad was a teamster. Uh, he's got two younger brothers. They're just, they're gritty, blue collar, West West yeah. Park, West Side of Cleveland people. So his gimmick, this showboaty, blonde, you know, tan, oiled up dude, is it's it's a gimmick. He's right. interacting, right? But he's it's also getting that. paid to put on a gimmick. What's that? He was getting paid to put on a gimmick. Well, I mean, millions of dollars yeah. to get exactly. Oh. If you get a chance, go watch his Netflix movie. It's horrible. <laughs> it is brutal. I'm going to tell you this right now. I'm going to clip this. To watch that one, Zip. <laughs> I'm, I'm, listen, I'm going to clip this and send it to him. It is him and Kane. Kane was this guy that used yeah. to wear a mask. I know who Kane was. So I used Kane to... was the co – Nick was the main guy. Dolph yeah. Ziggler is what they call him in the – or whatever. His name's Nick Thomas. But he lives his – got to live your gimmick, right? And I was like, I'm, I'm verbally abusing him as I'm, I'm watching this movie and I'm pausing it. And I'm like, this is, yeah. And I'm just being like, dude, there's no way. And they had like a, they had like a co-star girl and he was like a rogue cop. And that's funny. <laughs> they I'm took a kid it. and I'm they are watching just because he hyped up my tweet. I'll go ahead and watch it. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, dude, this movie's horrible. He goes, and he texts back. He's like, but I'm good in it. Right. <laughs> Dude. That's what I'm saying. Own who you are. I don't care. But yeah, <laughs> Hayden, Hayden. Pummel did it. Pummel owned it. Pummel, Pummel owned it. His, he lived I his gimmick on that one. I loved it. I, yeah. it. I I thought it was great. And you know what? Like, it was it was great. Those are the kind of interviews you hope for. Like, where you can get a clip of something, put it on social media, and have people talk about it. Sure. In his mind, no publicity is bad publicity because he's saying it about himself. He doesn't care. <laughs> like. What you were doing with the uh, – you weren't shooting full matches. You were shooting with that, like, Osmo thing. Yeah. Is yours actually an Osmo? I forget. It's a, it's a DGI, like, pocket. DGI, but like okay. Osmo. Yeah, pocket Osmo. Okay, so it's like a pocket Osmo. A gimbal is what it's actually called. It's a gimbal. Yeah, but it's not yeah. the full gimbal. It just – all it does is, like, hook it inside of your phone and hold yeah. it on your screen. It's yeah. awesome, but – after watching, you weren't filming full matches and then clipping. You were doing clips of action, yeah. stopping and and editing right there on the phone and then uploading it. It was amazing. Yeah, yeah. it was cool. I it's figured innovative. that out. Like, and I, I bought that camera the day before the tournament, so I've never used it before. And You shot a lot. It, a lot. I have a lot of clips. I, and, I have all of them too, don't I, except for most of the finals. Except right? for most of the finals. But yeah, for the most part, plus everything on social, so – but wow. yeah, everything wow. you send. But I think what helps too, what helped me is like knowing in wrestling, okay, those third place matches, 
you're going to get a reaction out of somebody winning. The semis matches, you're going to get a reaction knowing when to film. I can tell when someone's about to hit a move, maybe something like that. So it helped a lot. But yeah, those were fun to just be able to clip out and send it and um, just get that like immediate satisfaction from someone. And it's better than just seeing a tweet. Um, people like to see that. And a lot of the wrestlers are coming up to me saying, hey, like, did you put that video out of me? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, oh, that was awesome. Thank you. So like, those are kids. They like to see themselves too. So it ended up being really cool and it paid off. So glad I bought that like the day before. And you really got an eye for it. What's, what's crazy is, you know, and obviously let's just talk about the obvious thing. People don't think a woman can cover wrestling. Mm -hmm. That's what I love about you is, you know, meeting you at that first PWC event in Pittsburgh. I was just surprised and like I was in awe and how much knowledge you had of technique, mm -hmm. of match strategy, of their temperament, of their mentality, of their warm up, of the whole 360 degrees. I couldn't believe that. And, you know, once again, you know, you think I'm making this up. Who is this Hannah Mears? <laughs> Who is this Hannah? And, you know, like, it's, it's wild that I don't think, you know, you've been on this show before and we're recapping right now. You're like a co-host. Now I had you on as a guest, mm -hmm. but who is Hannah Mears? How do you know so much? And if they didn't watch that last show, how do you know so much about wrestling? How do you know when to shoot things? How do you, how do you have this like really extensive knowledge of wrestling? You're not just a sports reporter. You know, mm -hmm. you're working with the Penguins, with the Pittsburgh Penguins. You worked at Penn State last year where you graduated from. But, like, how do you know so much wrestling, Hannah? How do I know so much wrestling? Okay, well, that's a good question. Um, from what I was born, actually, my dad was a wrestling coach growing up. So he coached at Mount Pleasant for, like, eight years, maybe more. But Where's Mount that, Pleasant, for people who don't know? So Mount Pleasant, like, if you know where Latrobe is, Mount Pleasant, we're, like, an hour outside of Pittsburgh. So East, right? Uh, oh, Westmoreland County. Westmoreland County. Yeah. Southeast. Okay. Yeah. Westmoreland County. So my dad coached at Mount Pleasant, Lake Trobe, Kissy Prep. And then um, he also coached a lot of cadet teams and like junior teams, things like that. So school boys and cadets were mainly as well. So growing up with just a dad as a coach, first off, all I knew was wrestlers. We have, we had a training gym. We still have it here. Um, but the mats aren't there anymore and stuff like wrestlers came to my house. It was called Countryside Fitness. My dad had a club, Countryside Kids. Um, so I grew up with wrestlers everywhere. Like they were my brothers, they were my family, like that was it. And so just from my dad, my uncles were into wrestling. Every one of my cousins wrestled or at least tried to wrestle at one point. My brother wrestled. So I was sort of like pushed into it. And I mean, when I got to the matches, my mom was into the matches. My aunts were into the matches. Like everyone in our family knew about wrestling. So I was so consumed by the sport from a spectator point, how I made money growing up sometimes until I was like legal to get a job. I worked um, the events before they had all the technology. My uncle would be printing brackets and I'd be switching the numbers on the bout board at tournaments. And so like I'd be working tournaments here all summer. So really from my dad, my brothers, everything was just wrestling growing up. And I just sort of fell in love with the sport. Like that's what it was. And it keeps popping back up in my life like this, like, hello, this is what you're supposed to be doing. Like, <laughs> and, and I love it. But a lot of it too is I've learned a lot more about the sport once you become closer with people, because then you start supporting so many more people that you just watch like triple the matches you ever did. And then I like to consume the sport now, like you're saying, knowing things on social media and like what looks good in people's style. As a reporter in the more interviews I've done, I start to approach the interviews of like, I want to know who this person is. Like, I know what you just did on the mat, but you're not going to tell me anything that like, we didn't just see. It might not be interesting, but like, like the, hey, like the pummel interview, why the heck are you on some dude's shirt wearing just the WWE belt? Like this tells a lot about who you are off the mat. And so I, which is also just absurd, but there's just a lot of things you learn about people. And I started learning in the sport of wrestling then, well, why aren't wrestlers? Is getting promoted as these awesome people and not just a wrestler and a lot of it was the coverage wasn't there for a long time and now you're seeing like the rbys of the world making themselves these superstars that they want to be and that's the avenue that i'm trying to cover the sport in sure i know a lot about it but am i going to sit there and call a match i could we've talked about it but like it's not where i feel like i'm i know the sport the best to talk about it Whereas if I would sit down in a tournament, I want to be able to tell you 
this kid, maybe what his major was, who his sister is, what he does in his free time, like where he just was last week, what he ate for dinner. Like those are the cool things I think to know about athletes as people. So all of my background from just growing up with it to just consuming it on a level of like, those were my friend group. Those are the people I hung out with. Like it's all sort of meshing together now into just covering the sport as a fan and as someone who just wants the best for it. So your brother was a Pennsylvania state placer at heavyweight. He was a multiple time place winner. He was a whip champion, multiple place winner. He was on the whip team for Dapper Dan. It's okay. Here's the other thing. So a lot of these people, when you're talking, you like Ohio people are probably going to consume this, right? They'll watch and listen to this. Yeah. What, what is whip heel? What is W P I A L? Okay. What does this mean? Yeah. So the whip heel is in like, well, I mean, it's in, it's like our area, like it's, a, it's greater Pittsburgh is what it is. Yeah, basically. So that's, that's what the whip is. It's greater Pittsburgh area. I don't know how you want me to explain that to people in Ohio. No, like, no, no. It's the greater Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh and that's like, yes. it's geographically speaking, whip heel, Western. Wait, what's, what's the actual acronym? WPIAL, which means Western Pennsylvania inter, inter, scholastic athletic. Yeah, inter, interscholastic athletic, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's how you guys, you qualify through whip heel. Yes. You qualify so for the state. Ours goes, well, yeah, ours goes like section. Like when my brother wrestled, he had to go like sections, whip heel states. This it's year. It's your district COVID, essentially. Yes. Yes. Or regional for some people that second step before the state right, tournament. Right, second step. Oh, yes. state or states, by the way. State or states. Hey, so funny because I grew up in Pennsylvania and it's states. And I transitioned to saying state at Ohio this entire weekend because everyone was saying state. And so in all my interviews, I'm like state. And I'd like have to pause because I was like, don't say states. Like they're going to look at you like you don't know how to speak. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. Even here, it's a 50-50. You get to Columbus okay. and you get to Cincinnati and they'll say states. Yeah. But up in the northern part, it, it's state. But and like whatever. state makes matter. sense, but like states is all I've ever said. <laughs> so it's states. Yeah. But you, yeah. you adjusted your vernacular for uh, your vocabulary for, I tried. for the Ohio I tried. folks. I did try my best for you guys. <laughs> and here's the other thing. So you've watched so much great wrestling. Your dad was a high school coach and all the places you know, he's, he's actually the coach at late trobe now this, he really he is huh he, he's this year yeah wow he was hired mm -hmm. that's crazy and it, so he was at kiski kiski prep kiski prep for a while he was an assistant at late trobe for a while um mount pleasant was like the big part of his career now he's back at late trobe and he coached a lot of um cadet and schoolboy teams as well so people might turn this off after i say this but i gotta say it pennsylvania is the best high school wrestling state um, it's, and it's not, it's not really up for debate. Um, we get you like one every four or five years and all Americans are more national chance. We do get you once every five, four or five yeah. years, but year in and year out, you got the most qualifiers of the D ones, the D twos and the D threes. You got the most all Americans and all those usually. And it's wild to see the, you got the most D one colleges, right? Uh, and then you know, obviously the, the flagship program of the last decade in the United States of America, NCAA Division One, is, is Penn State. You know, you're a grad. Mm -hmm. We are. I know. I know. It's your, it's your thing. But <laughs> I didn't say it. You said it. <laughs> I know. But the, the thing is, I don't, don't think um, a lot of people really, you know, like I, I had a hard time with it at first when I started following my nephew, Ian. And we went over to the bad karma duels at like Teal College. And we started doing stuff at PA. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's pretty good. He was a three-time D1 All-American, and he was an Ohio State champ. He won the Ironman. You know, he's university national champ. He's won everything, right? Didn't win the NCAAs, but he's a three-time All-American. He's pretty good. So getting in there and, and running into old man Waller, you know, and, and running into some of these guys, um, they were like, you really saw the depth of Pennsylvania in a lot of these events where I started following him to. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, my God. Then I got a contract. Jared Opper and I built this thing. Go Ohio cast. Mm -hmm. Right. We built the Ohio cast and I covered the EWL for two years. And some high school things started getting mixed in there. And then the recruiting that like Bloomsburg, Lock Haven, Clarion and Edinburgh was doing was incredible. And I'm like, who is this guy? Where'd yeah. you get this guy? And he's like, oh, yeah, he was seventh in the state once. 
the thing that got me was there was this guy who was fifth in the state. His name was uh, James Fleming from Clarion. They changed the rule book because of this guy. He had this crazy backside headlock where he was trying to pop people's heads off their shoulders. They called him James Snapper Fleming. He was a two-time All-American at Clarion under Tig Moore. And he was a mutant. He was a one-time state placer in PA. <laughs> they had this other guy, Matt Moley at Bloomsburg. And it's just, and it's what, and what, it's what those schools have been, those PSAC yeah. schools, right? And then you had that, that, that crossover with those PSAC schools with Lock Haven, Bloomsburg, Edinburgh. Yeah. And um, Clarion, right? So they, yeah. they used to do both. They used to do PSACs in December, and then they would obviously do the EWO to qualify for NCAs. And in a lot of those right. schools, Hannah, only sponsor Division One wrestling. Mm -hmm. You know that, right? Yeah. Like Lock, Lock Haven does. So it, they, yeah, Lock they Haven's only. I think they, they, so field hockey. Dad they're, they're, your dad field hockey. Funny because yeah, so my dad wrestled at Lock Haven, and my best friend Maddie, who played field hockey at Penn State, her mom played field hockey at Lock Haven while my dad was wrestling there. So that's how I knew those were the two Division Ones. They were both yeah. like CBA, but yeah. Blackhaven wrestling and now they have girls which is pretty freaking cool yeah but, but i think and we talked to tig Moore. he's the former coach of american university mm -hmm. we asked him that we're like why you know and i always ask that i'm always like oh what's the best you know the cliche question whenever i talk to a pa guy is what's the best high school wrestling state and you know yeah. of course they're proud of it and, oh, yeah. you look at the qualifiers it's simple numbers because it is um i mean double the qualifiers sometimes do you realize that it's of the lot. next of the next state, whether it's Illinois, Ohio, or California, usually, yeah. you usually have double the qualifiers almost. So, long story short, Tigmore made a great he made a great point. All those PSAC schools are a lot of them are, are education schools. They're big majors teaching education, right? That's what dad went for, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, and yeah. So, yeah. so you obviously know this. Mm -hmm. And he said Tigmore made a great point. He was like, "What you have is you have guys who have very successful college careers." who learned from guys like, I don't know, Bob Bubb, the National Coach of, the, uh, Coach of the Year Award, is named after Clarion head coach, former Clarion head coach Bob Bubb, right? Kurt Angle's head coach, Eric Burnett's head coach. You know, he, he had some really good guys, right? He said these guys go back and they teach. They don't leave Pennsylvania. They stay in Pennsylvania. They get jobs in Pennsylvania. And some of them become middle school coaches. Some of them become high school coaches. And you have an inordinate amount. You have the state with the most D1 qualifiers, D2 qualifiers, D3, whatever, right? We can, they run the gamut, right? And he said, he was like, they go back and they're teaching this high level wrestling to middle schoolers and high schoolers. And I was like, dude, that's a great point. Yeah. That's a great point. And you it's probably never like thought about it. Constantly feeding itself. And yeah. It has been yeah. so long. And that's what it is too. Like we were talking about the state tournament and like, I would have loved to see the Ohio State tournament at its prime. Luke was telling me, like, how awesome it looks to be at. And he's like, you yeah. would have loved it. And he was like – and I was like, yeah, I know. But even just when you go sit at PA States, like, the high-level wrestling that you see every single match is just absurd. Absurd. So I would have really loved to get, like, a good comparison of, so like – could have seen D2, D1. Extent, like, just not, not that I didn't – get a good vibe but it's just COVID year like we were in a gym like I wanted to compare the state tournaments at their prime even yeah. PA this year wouldn't have been at its prime yeah no and you're right the level of wrestling you see is just it's really insane and I think if we're talking about the whip you like we were talking about earlier I want to say it was one year it might have been my junior year we had like seven of the guys from just the whip eel and i want to say maybe even a large number of that was just from our section ended up being i want to say state champs or at least in the top three and i have to go back and check my facts on like the numbers but it was almost over half i want to say was like the state finals from our area like it's it was pretty insane okay so like you go to the some of these western states or these southern states mm -hmm. and it's the 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 quality drop off of wrestling is pretty drastic and, and noticeable. Um, but a state like Georgia has gotten a lot better, right? Like a state like Georgia has gotten a lot better, mm -hmm. but North Carolina is a state where you really can't gauge if a kid's a four time state champ, really just how good they are. Right. right. What did yeah. you gauge the talent level as? What did you gauge the, you know, what, did you feel like, okay, this is a close second behind Pennsylvania and you went to the division 
that's not as deep as the other two divisions, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which you could argue that D3 and D2 are pretty comparable as far as depth. You could make that yeah. argument. Yeah. But D1's, a, it's a level up. D1, the big schools in Ohio, it's a level up. Right. How did you feel that uh, the level was, you know, you've obviously been to some, a bunch of PA state tournaments since you were a girl. How did you feel about the level? So I think what was, what was nice about it was that you guys did have full brackets, right? But I think that first round was sort of just like, oh, man. Like some of these kids I don't even think would like be breathing at the state tournament. But as it went on, as it went on, those semis and finals matches were, were quality. I mean, you are still talking about some of the best guys in the state, despite the fact like you can't say Gavin Brown's not good because he wrestled D3. Like we've talked about how many good guys come from D3 just because they had what a bad draw where their house is and they're in a smaller area. But overall, I thought the level of wrestling was good. I think what was hard for me was that first day to gauge anything. First off, my first day there was so overwhelming for me because that was the first time I walked in somewhere not knowing a single athlete that was competing. I knew storylines for sure, but like didn't, couldn't put a face to a name yet. So as people are wrestling, I'm like, is this kid really even good? Did he get here by chance? I don't know. So I didn't really get a good gauge until about like, the placing third and fourth placing matches and semis of like, okay, these guys could compete with some of the guys we have. Yeah. There's um, no question. That's it. So it was, it was hard. And I would have liked to see, like you said, at that whole caliber of the tournament to really get a good comparison, but. So overall I, you felt, you felt pretty good. You felt like, okay, this is, this isn't a big drop off from PA. This isn't, this yeah. isn't egregious. This isn't now, like going like, to the Arkans Arkansas no, State Tournament or something. No, we watched some great matches. But in terms of like, okay, Division three schools competing with like AAA or PA, no, I don't think that would have been a good comparison. But that's also like saying a lot of those D3 guys wrestling D1. You know what I mean? You're taking our biggest guys. However, in AA, which is Pennsylvania's in AAA and AA, if you take them into that, sure. That's a lot of quality matches too. So I think it's hard to gauge, but if you're looking at it from just statistically, like PA is just, it's incredible with just. No, this. yeah, I, I'm saying, and I'm reinforcing yeah. what you're saying. Uh, yeah. So you feel like Matten, LaCure, Gavin Brown, Wyatt Miller, Cole Hoffer, uh, uh, Jizo Pete's, uh, uh, Casey Barnett, and the Campbell brothers and the Shorts, they could be competitive in Pennsylvania. I can see them being competitive. Yeah, they, yeah. they, could, they could, those guys can roll. Competitive. I can, uh, yeah. They absolutely. could be PA state placers. Is, they could be top eight. I don't, we we'll see, but yeah, I think better. I just think I mean top eight. Like you're looking at the kids who took top eight in the state this year. I mean, like we had kids that you look at just from our area, and you're like, yeah, they're some of the best, and they were just like, they didn't they didn't place high, or some Crazy. kids didn't even make it there because we only had eight kids go to the tournament this year in each weight. You had that super regional put in there this year. Oh, that's right. So our state tournament wasn't a full bracket. So nice. looking at the state results this year, almost hard too, because these kids actually like their hardest matches were like in super regionals and like Whippeals. That's wild. That yeah. is wild. So like you had a lot of kids there and you're just like, man, like this was just not state like at all. It was done in like a day and hours. Like, so, so here's what I'll say to you. You guys have, uh, I think it was a Wyatt Henson from Waynesburg. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's, Waynesburg's he's, got a lot of good guys. Let's say it again. Waynesburg's got a lot of good guys. Yeah. So he was eighth at the Ironman. Yes. He was eighth at the Ironman and there were like four Ohio guys that placed ahead of him. Mm-hmm. And one of them was a D3 guy. So, you know, but, you, can, you can look at it like that. You know what I mean? Like, I'm trying to give you a gauge. There's also a few guys, I think, on that team who have come from different states over the years as well. Like, they're not like your homegrown PA guys. No, that is not a normal uh, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania doesn't do the Blair Academy. The Wyoming, They're not doing the right. boarding thing, right? No. Those schools but, aren't doing that. Yeah, there's. I think there's some getting away with some of it, but for the most part, traditional Pennsylvania teams are not. Like, they're sticking with what they have from the get-go. Yeah, um, McCourt. I think McCourt's going to be the next big thing there. Yeah, I think so, too, and I think we McCourt. know why. We got a good right. – We got a gauge. <laughs> yeah. We got a real good gauge on that. And then, a real good gauge. Was it, was it Mason Gibson got panned in the tilt by Unger, right? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. 
Yeah. So if that doesn't explain like PA wrestling, I I mean, it's just, it's crazy. Well, I mean, here, here, here on this. uh, Listen, here it is. You ready? Spencer Lee lost his fourth state title to Austin DeSanto. Yeah. I don't want to drop my mic, but (laughs) if I, if that doesn't give you a gauge on how, how really good PA is, I, I mean, of course, few, he had a torn ACL. We all know that. And he wasn't, you know, at 100. Regardless, but, there are few and far between that could ever be four-time PA state champs. It's few yeah. and far. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's rare. It, the state, yeah, like you're saying, though, yeah, those guys, after you say what you just said, though, how, they, how it was only eight at the state, mm-hmm. um, yeah, those guys would be. <laughs> yeah. So if you made the state you placed. Yes. You are yes. already a placer walking into the Giant Center. Yes. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Which is I just knew crazy. they were doing that. I knew they were doing that because somebody yeah. posted it on their uh, Twitter. It might have been Willie or someone was like, oh, this is egregious. They're going to help me. You know, it's only going to be eight guys and they're splitting everything in half. And it was all COVID related. And we understand that, right? Yeah. But it's like, unfortunate though, because it's like when you walk into the state tournament, like you said, there's that aura of like, you have guys fighting harder than you've ever seen. You have these matches and upsets. You have DeSantos taking out Spencer Lee's because that's the state tournament. You're looking to place the blood round at the state tournament. Anywhere at any tournament is the most exciting thing to watch. And yeah. that was sort of just happening at like super regionals. We had kids who could have come from Whippeal that were getting their hearts broken at like Whippeal because they were only taking like two from there. Like it was crazy. Crazy. That's yeah. insane. Oh my gosh. So, okay. So, you know, we, we get that you guys, it's a cut up, right? It's, it's a step up for, from PA to Ohio. And then, you know, obviously being at D3, D3, is, it doesn't have the depth that Division One in Ohio does. Because if you went to D1 in Ohio, you'd be like, okay, these guys can literally, literally, literally half the bracket can roll in Pennsylvania. Yeah. They're, but you're also, tough. I, I like to think of it this way too. Would you put your football team, like our, your – double single well, what I guess you, you guys have your D3 football team against like a D1 team no you don't have the depth you don't have the kids you don't do it so like it's hard to com- just say all the time like oh well your team stinks well yeah we have maybe two good guys but we also barely make a team sometimes because of the amount of kids that are in our school let alone that want to wrestle like it's not an easy thing to want to do either so I think it's it's hard to compare district wise I think it's easier to compare statewide because then you can compare schools to actual sizes of schools yeah. But there are some great kids coming out of that tournament that I'm really looking forward to. Like I said, yes, the Gavin Browns who just carry themselves. They're ready for competition. He's going to Fargo. Like, don't say because he's from D3. You know, Colin Moore reminded me that he was from that division. Yeah. Colin Moore was D3. And there you go. Romero, like, those guys, yeah. you know, Luke was telling me all about it. He's like, yeah, that's where they went too. So, Steber brothers. Yeah, Stevers, yep. Yeah, Camp Tassari. I mean, they've had just D3s. It, it has a rich tradition. There's no question about it. Jay Jaggers, obviously. I mean, you know, we already talked about this, but, like, Jaggers. they're there, man. They're there, but, like, the depth just is – the depth yeah. is very different. And, and yeah. you you probably noticed that. The depth is very, very, just, very different. That'll just come from people understanding sports as well. Like, oh, right yeah, yeah. The depth – and like, it's, it's, it's a smaller pool of people, too. You have You have smaller schools with smaller amounts of – athletes to choose from so that's that's a that, that is a direct result of that yeah but overall I had I really enjoyed that entire tournament I thought it was sweet like I said that was the most challenge Zeb is always about challenging me and that was one of the most challenging things I've ever done walking in somewhere completely lost had no idea I just started shooting was feeling it out thought I was doing horrible like I was so discouraged after the first day because I was like I got, because I was just I felt like I was out of I was in my element with wrestling. I knew I could get good coverage, but I was out of my element in terms of like, I can walk up to this kid and ask him like 40 things and be like, I I already know him anyway, or I've already watched, I haven't watched their matches this season. Like I covered Pennsylvania wrestling in my area this season. So it took me almost all season to learn these kids. Like I've been in college. So a lot of these kids that were younger than me, I didn't know them inside and out either. So to have to try to learn about these kids in one weekend was probably the most challenging thing I ever did but it paid off and it got me the confidence to just be like trust your instincts with questions just approach it regularly eventually by the finals I was walking up to people and their families I was like who wants to get in this Trey Allen and his mom one of the my favorite interviews from the semis 
they were just hugging and it was because he went and hugged his mom after every single win this season at a big tournament and like interviewed them crying together so there were a lot of moments you just have to trust but it was it was difficult but I really enjoyed it and shout out to everyone in Ohio for making me feel so welcome and being welcome and like being willing to do all those interviews I know it's like hard to ask sometimes my thing was I knew you were gonna you were gonna swim which is why I, I knew you were gonna swim I knew you were gonna sink <laughs> I didn't want to sink. I didn't want to disappoint anybody. Yeah. Sometimes we got to throw you into the New River Gorge and let you, yeah, well, I was you go through some class fives and figure it out. I was thrown off the deep end. Let me tell yeah. you. Yeah. Well, here's what's crazy about it. Like, if you ever, I mean, how I operate is it's a lot of shooting from the hip, if you haven't noticed. Mm. It, it, is, it is just figuring things out as you go, right? Like, you do a ton of research. You're an actual journalist. Mm. Well, a lot of this is my life, right? Like, no, you have a journalism degree from Penn State. Yeah. <laughs> I have a, I have an adolescent <laughs> education. Yeah, yeah. Degree. yeah. I have an adolescent education, uh, seven through 12 degree um, from Penn State. And I got some, whatever, some master's degree from somewhere, teacher leadership. But the point is like, you're, this is your profession. This is your actual craft, you know? Um, I'm like a part-time at it, whereas you're like, you know, like you got to understand, I, Mark Bader, I, I learned we, Mark Bader and I came through this together as well as Joe Williamson mm. doing stuff with, with Flo Wrestling and Martin Floriani. And that's how I learned. I learned be, like as being a fanatical fan about it. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't bother me when I see a Hannah Mears come in and be like, whoa, okay, now we've, now you understand what a real journalist should look like. And, and talk like and sound like and work like and produce work like and like the thing you put together with the shores was super impressive i was like this is really cool best thing was you were wearing this shirt i was you were, rock, you were rocking it hey josh saw that josh was I like was, i, I did saw it that this. thank you that was branding on my yeah, part it's, that was good job. Right. it's in the wash right now or else i would have thrown it on but i literally just unpacked today from that tournament because i've been working so much <laughs> since Dude. then so Okay, do you wanna do you wanna go at brackets with me? Do you wanna go at these brackets with me a little bit? Do you Let's wanna go, go at these it. end? Do you wanna go at this a little bit or what? Let's go for it. I don't have them in front of me, but go ahead. Shoot your shot. All right. <laughs> Listen, hold on. Let's go. We're gonna go for second place. We're gonna shoot for second place at 125 pounds. Yeah, because okay, wait. My okay. first that one's note. easy. Pause. That one's pretty easy. Pause. Pause. My first note I wrote down when I was researching nationals and just trying to get a feel for like who's there, what's going on, what can I expect. I said, "Someone please give Spencer Lee a match." I think in my mind, I sat down. I had a conversation with Luke because Spencer's from my area. I've watched him growing up. Whatever. I said, "I am so annoyed." I said, "Is I said, Luke, you wrestled him." I said, "Tell me, is he this next level good? Where you literally just you can't even win anymore." Because I've watched him grow up and he's had matches in PA. He has yeah. had, we've talked about it. And Luca's, I, and like, it was just us bouncing ideas back and forth. And I got to a point and I've heard it. I think Chenzo and them have said it before too. When I was listening to other podcasts, people don't just give up. They just expect to lose. And I'm just like, someone walk out there and don't give a crap. Just wrestle him. Like I, I'm rooting for Spencer. Obviously everyone's rooting for, wants, wants people to win. But like, I want to someone at this tournament to shock the world and give him one heck of a match okay the most disappointing stat about spencer lee he should be so disappointed in himself <laughs> zero third period points yeah. oh. <laughs> zero third period points Crazy. what's this guy doing man can't even score a point in the third period oh because you tend to yeah. pin or tuck everybody before the third got it never mind never mind he went to the second against the Purdue guy in the Big Ten final, I believe. I believe that's what he – yes. Yes, that's what it was, yeah? Yeah, but I, I just – I just. Want yes, to, I believe that's what happened. I want him to give a match, not because I'm not rooting him, rooting for him or supporting him, just because I, like, I want to see somebody really go head-to-head -head with him and believe in themselves, and then we can be like, okay, that guy, like, now let's pay attention to this guy because someone wasn't scared to give him a match. Here's what I'll say. They got, they got the four and the three wrong, in my opinion. They put Brandon Courtney of Arizona State University at the three, and they put Drew Hildebrand of Central Michigan at the four. That should fl be flip-flopped. Uh, maybe it's my Mid-American Conference homerism. <laughs> but um, 
I, yeah, Drew Hildebrandt. I, I did a duel with him this this uh, uh, the Cleveland State duel, and Drew Hildebrandt's really good. I think if Drew Hildebrandt were on the other side, he'd beat Latona and he could get in the finals. Um, but I would say the big one, the big one there is you have Sam Latona as the two seed from Virginia Tech, but the X factor in the bottom half of the bracket, and because we're picking second, right? We're picking Drew Hildebrandt's the four seed. He's he's not getting past Spencer. We get that. Right, right. 11, Dylan Raguson of Michigan. He won the U.S. Open. He was on fire early on. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it was a COVID thing, if it was an injury thing, what happened with him, but he would be my pick. He's the 11 seed. Mm-hmm. I, I, would, I will take him to get past uh, Jacob Camacho. I'll take him to get past. What was first round match. Uh, what do you think about Heinzelman? You're not, you're not throwing Heinzelman in the mix at all? You know what? He got a lot better. Malik Heinzelman got a, a lot, lot better. better. He's the and 10. The reason, I, the reason I'm saying that, though, is because I watched a lot of Ohio State wrestling last year, and I noticed a difference in him this year, and I'd like to see him, too. Here's the problem so with curious. his draw. First off, the problem with his draw is he, 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 pull, he, he comes out with Robbie Howard, mm-hmm. and then second round's a problem. Here. It's Taylor Lamont, Taylor Lamont of uh, UVU. And Taylor Lamont is a big Greco-Roman guy, and he's a massive 125, and he's super strong. So that is a – I think that's a bad matchup for Malik. Personally, mm-hmm. I don't even know what their past matchups have been. Yeah. But I'm just so – what I know of the two. two. Fair. Fair. If we're yeah. talking about the two, fair. But I am excited to see what he does. Yeah. So, I, But I'll take Dylan Raguson for runner-up. I like Malik. I like Taylor Lamont. I mean, I like Sam Latona, but Raguson had him a fall, and he's pretty good, and they got him down at the 11. So, yeah, 33, 33, 33. Uh, wow. Austin 33. DeSanto gets a four seed over uh, – Corbin Myers gets the three seed over Austin DeSanto. I'm going RBY. I'm going RB. I have RBY. I, and I think he's I think he's ready for everything this year that's been thrown at him. Like, And he also has to score. I don't know if he can do what Penn State needs him to do in terms of like being right there with Iowa for the team title because he's going to have to put up a lot of points. But because I think I would say a lot of those matches are going to end up being close. But I'm going with RBY. Are you going with the RBY over fix? Because See, I, I'm I was just going to pick finalists, but I, I mean, if you want to pick finalists, I'm probably going to go with Dayton Fix over RBY, but whew, RBY is really good. Mm-hmm. He's hard to pick against, but like Dayton Fix has been on the senior world team. He's been in the world championships. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, he is really RBY good. RBY is tough. He's, he's good he's, in a lot he's of so crazy positions. Crazy. He's a cat. He's yes. like all he over. He's like Dicky Yes. Yeah. The yeah. Mongoose. That's he is. That. He is. That's a coin flip for me. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, yeah, that's going to be a good one, but I think we can see. You're, yeah, that's obviously, you, you're going to go with with RBY, Roman Bravo Young. I will and not with, because Penn State, because I actually do believe that if there's a year, I think this year is RBY's year. He's really good. Yes. He's really good. No, I'm not, I yeah. didn't say it was homerism at all. Yeah. He's really good. Um, I'll stick with Dayton Fix. All right. I'm going to go with Dayton Fix. Who do you like at uh, 41? we got Ironman at the 1. Well, obviously, you have to go with Cole Matthews at the 16. <laughs> right? So here's my thing with Cole Matthews. Gosh, okay. So I remember I talked to him for the PwC event, first one. And I've been watching Cole Matthews since he won the Outstanding Wrestler his eighth grade year at the Greater Lake Trobe Olympic Wrestling Tournament, so our GLOW tournament, and at my high school. And we didn't have an Olympic Wrestler trophy – or Olympic Wrestler, Outstanding Wrestler trophy – so Luke Fletcher and my brother and some of their teammates gathered up a bunch of empty Mountain Dew bottles, taped them together, and drew a wrestler on the front and wrote, wrote Outstanding Wrestler and gave it to him. So since his days in high school at Reynolds, like junior high, I've been watching him. And this year, I feel like there's just like this one piece of the puzzle that he's missing to really be that guy in the top. And he's had so many close matches. He's gone into overtime so many times. And I would just really like to see him go far. 
But I also think this bracket is just absurd to the point where when you're seeing Ironman as potentially your second match, you've got your hands full. Yeah, Jaden Ironman, I think, really jumped levels. His match, yeah, the match with Nick Lee and Sebastian Rivera in the semifinals of the mm-hmm. Big Ten was one of the best matches I've seen all year. Mm-hmm. Did you see it? Mm-hmm. it? It was incredible. The finish was incredible. The overtime finish was incredible. That scramble, uh, yeah, no, I'm up and down. I'm like, this is amazing. <laughs> and my aunt's like, you love this, don't you? I'm like, look at this scramble. Look at this. Yeah, so I'm like, yeah. how can't you? This is amazing. But yeah. I mean, you know, I Chad, love, I love looking at Nick Lee though, too. Because, I mean, I was, you know, watched Fletcher Nick Lee last year. Obviously it was rooting against him there, even though he's one of my good friends from Penn state, but Nick Lee has this thing though. When he, he locks in, I really, really enjoy watching him wrestling. He's a grinder. He's blue collar. I like the way he wrestles. I loved watching him in Luke's matches um, from a fan standpoint, but from a girlfriend standpoint, my heart was in my stomach, but um, I, I think I would pick Nick Lee, Nick Lee to be in the finals for sure. Okay. So you get Nick Lee. I got Ironman winning it, but just let me mention some people who I think are probably. And I have, I have Cole Matthews shaking some things up. So Cole, don't let me down. Chad Red. What do you think? I have to ask you this though. What do you think about Real Woods being there? I know there's a lot of controversy. It. Love it. it. Love it. But don't even care right. that they got the wrestle matches after conference. I love it. This is a story. This is the way they're going to, I don't know if they're mm-hmm. going to save the program. But Real Woods' story is crazy because Real Woods has taken, like, some inordinate amount of credit hours. He's trying to get his degree. So mm-hmm. I think that's what a lot of the, out a lot of the uh, him not being in the lineup is. He's, he's, like, he's burning the candle at both ends. He's trying to get his degree. He's taken over 20 credit hours. I heard something insane. I was like, oh, my gosh. So Real Woods' deal is, is yeah, I mean, it, yeah. it you know, but I, I, I mean, I know, why they, and I know why they haven't seated why they do, and I know it doesn't match with blah blah blah. Someone, one of the predictions had him as a sleeper. I was like, I don't call him a sleeper. He's not in a sleeper that at all. He's not a sleeper at all. No, He's no. given people matches last year. He was a high competitor. Yeah. He was. He was. He was in the talks for top three last year. Yeah. Come on. So I don't think he's a sleeper, no. but I do think it shakes a lot of things up last minute and you've got to love things being shaken up at the NCAA tournament. So. Real Woods is really good. It, yeah. yeah. Um, but like the ones for me, if you want me to go total Homer here, I'm a Homer. You know that I'm an Ohio Homer. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. But, but first off the guy who's a big problem for everybody, Chad red. Yes. Chad red's a gamer. Chad red can pin anyone. Chad red is really good for Nebraska. But mm-hmm. but but my heart, are you ready for my heart? Yeah. Drew Matten, his brother who you okay. saw was a state runner up and yes. he's also yes. headed to Michigan. Yes. I'm a big Drew Matten guy. Uh, I'm a big Dylan D'Amelio guy of Ohio State. Okay. Yep. Um, yep. Great, great family, great dad, great kid. I've been covering him since he was a little a little dude, little guy at the OEC that you're doing this weekend. <laughs> Dylan D'Amelio. But the guy, the two guys that are really a big problem, and it breaks my heart that they're in the same quarter bracket is Dom Demas mm-hmm. and Tariq Wilson. Yeah. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Yeah. Um, but what? Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to step out on a limb. I'm going to go Seabass mm, versus a Jaded Ironman in the finals, and Seabass gets it done. Get out. All right. I can respect it. Are you taking Nick Lee all the way? Nick Lee all the way? I'm taking Nick Lee all the way. Okay. I'm taking him in Ironman, and I know know people are like, oh, the one and two, blah, blah, blah. I do agree with you that I think Tariq Wilson and where you could see um, potential matchups with him, I'm excited to see him compete as well. Yeah. But all the way, I think I'm going to have to root with Nick Lee. I I love watching him compete, and, you know, so I'm going to go with Nick Lee. Okay. So – Sammy Sasso, AOC one two, Austin O'Connor, Mahler the three, Bula Wallen the four for Oki State. Oh man, I got I got Cody Kamara upset special KSU over B- Bula Wallen. There you go, boom, you're hearing it here first. <laughs> and here here is my bracket buster. You ready? I'm ready. I'm looking for him. I'm looking for him on the bracket. Seven seed, App State, Jonathan Milner. Okay. My nephew's his coach. Yeah. And this dude is a junkyard dog. <laughs> He's All right. about six foot tall. He's 149. 
He's in that bottom half with AOC. He's in that seven two, right? He could he could knock off AOC, and in that six seed, I got Bryce Andonian into the semis. Have you seen Andonian yet? Yeah. Yeah. Well, think? I think I think that I think I don't think that's a bad I don't think that's a bad pick. I like Jade yeah. Navis. I like Jade Navis. I like Jade Navis into the quarters against Sasso, but I'll take I'm going to take uh, Sasso to the finals. Yeah, I agree. And Sasso to I the will... finals. You're Okay, so where are you taking are you just saying Milner's going to shake things up a little bit? I think Milner knocks off I think he puts AOC in a bad spot. All right. I think he's a bad matchup for AOC. And that's that's a good way to look at it too. Just the way they match he's up against. Massive him. and he wrestles really hard. Yeah. He's massive and he wrestles like super hard. And he mm-hmm. just like goes for broke a bunch. He doesn't go for broke in the sense of like a Bryce Antonian goes for broke though. Yeah. One of the guys to watch there too, we didn't even talk about Van, Van Brill. Van Br- that 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 bracket's actually all of these. The Rutgers guy, Van Bro. Oh, yeah. Which this is he, not John. This is no Mike Van Bro. Mike Van Bro, because John's the brother, right? Mm-hmm. John's the one who hurt Nolf. Am I wrong? He is. He's the guy who hurt Nolf. Am I wrong? Your knowledge. No, he's better the guy. Than I'm ta- no, I'm I'm saying yeah. John Van Bro hurt Nolf. Do you remember that? It was weird. It was a yeah. weird situation. Nolf's knee like kind of popped. It yeah, didn't look that like wasn't was good. Game. That wasn't good. No, it was like, oh, it was terrible. Um, okay, fifty seven. Fifty seven. Deacon is a freaking machine. He's massive. Mass. He's massive. I'm I'm excited to see Jesse Delvecchia, um, mix it up. I I'm excited for the Del potentially the the Delvecchia. Mm-hmm. Caleb Young matchup. They're four yeah. five. I really like that matchup. Um, David Carr Hydley. I mean, flip a coin. Don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Hydley is a star. I yeah, Hydley's. I'm taking Hydley, but I don't know if I'm putting him over Deacon at the end. And that's it's hard for me to say because I like the Hydleys a lot. I like them a lot. Done interviews with them. Great people. They've been on my dad's teams before. Like like Hayden a lot. I think Deacon's a freaking beast. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's hard to pick against. It's hard to pick against Hayden Hidley, I, I, in my opinion. I'm going to take Hayden Hidley. I, I'm a big right. Hayden Hidley guy. Big yeah. fan. Uh, the Deacon guy is on a mission, though. He looks yeah. like he's on another level. But if there's someone who can beat him, well, first off, there's two guys who can beat him. David Carr can beat him. David Carr can absolutely beat him, but is David P- Carr going to get past Hidley? I'm saying no. And <sighs> Deacon David beat Hidley really before 6-2 already, so maybe maybe Hidley gets him this time. So I don't know. That's a hard one to pick, but I'm excited. I want, the, I want that rematch to happen. Who are you taking? Are you taking Hidley? I'm going Hidley. I'm not betting against Hidley. I like, uh, but I'm a David Carr fan yeah. big time. I don't know. I'm going to go with Hidley. I say Deacon makes the finals, but Hidley, Hidley's going to yeah, get Yeah, I think it, looking at the fact that they have wrestled before, I think Hidley could get him this time. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, I Definitely. Think Hidley, but I do, yeah, I think that's a great matchup for both of them. 65. The God, this bracket's fun. Uh, so really, here, I, okay. So here, here's my thing. I, Makai Lewis is, is not himself right now. Nope. Not he's, himself. He's not and himself. I think, I think Jake Wenzel gives people so much freaking trouble. <laughs> he is a uh, machine on top. He's backpack. He's he's sixty five, one sixty five backpack. But stronger, in my yes. opinion, like stronger on top. Yes. I would I would have taken. Yeah, I'm just I've been blown away watching him this year. It's just, I mean, God, it's impressive. It yeah. is impressive, and you need that. And I think in the ter- this tournament. He's gonna really. He's gonna make some people cry. So, you ready for the bracket buster? I'm ready. That's not really a bracket buster. Some of these guys had a had a loss at conference. Like what they did to this guy and what they did to to DeSanto. I just don't like it. Also, where's Grundy here? Yeah, Grundy seven. Grundy seven. 
So I'm taking my guy. He so you know he went to my high school, right? Yeah. In yeah. Maryland. So yeah. Ethan Smith, Ohio State's the seven. You ready for my bracket buster? Yes. Travis Whitlake. It. Travis Whitlake at the ten. Him and Grundy gonna pit, mix yeah. it up, and I think mm-hmm. whoever wins that match clears into the semis. I'm saying Grundy to the semis. Okay. I'm, the I'm gonna take Whitlake to the semis over Grundy and over Valencia. And then, okay, but also I'm taking Keegan like O'Toole. Like Joe Lee at first. Don't sleep on Joe Lee. That's going to be right. a tough match out of Yeah, the that's that's a bad matchup for Travis. Tough Whitlake. Match. That's a bad matchup for Travis Whitlake. Travis Whitlake is good though. Not that Joe but Lee's Joe not Lee's good. Sitting not right that there. Joe Lee's not good. Right, but I'm I'm not, and I'm not saying that just because I'm saying look at what you have seven twenty three ten right there like. Those matchups are a little, a little dicey for just being able to pick a guarantee there. All right, I got Keegan O'Toole, Jake Wenzel quarterfinal, and I'll take. Are you I'll taking take, Marinelli? I'll take Wenzel. Ball. I'll take Wenzel, but I got Keegan O'Toole as an All American, as a true freshman All American for Mizzou. But um, I will take Travis Whitlake versus Wenzel in the semis. I will take. Whitlake in the finals, and then I'm taking. If, if Makai Lewis were different right now, if he were healthy, right, I'd take him. I haven't. I don't think we've seen seen him at his near near his best. So if but Andrew I also Sparks, think, if Andrew Sparks of Minnesota were healthy, Andrew Sparks would be an All American. Andrew Sparks is a true freshman from Minnesota. Well, he's from California, but he's massive for the weight. He is humongous and he doesn't really do know, know how who, to wrestle that much do you know who i also think is a dangerous wrestler at this weight just the way that they wrestle is kennedy monday and i kennedy say monday, they got him like some 21st seed or what 22nd seed. 22nd seed. He, yeah kennedy monday he's one of those people what we were talking about casey barnett earlier he's a crater he's lanky he's dangerous when i watched the match against him and wenzel at Pitt, like there were multiple occasions where people were holding their breath thinking Wenzel was about to get pinned because he's just so, he's just a weird wrestler to watch, but he could catch a lot of these like, I get like good solid guys that yeah. stick to a traditional route in some crazy things. Like he gets you out of your comfort zone. You have to wrestle him a different way. So I think having him there kind of makes it a little dicey. 65 is, where's a Bullard? There's a Bullard in there. Which bowler do we got? I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. Oh, Braun Eagle's a Braun Eagle's a problem from Illinois. He's a bad matchup. He's their junkyard dogs. And then we have a Bullard, right? There is a Bullard, yes? Yeah, Thomas Bullard. He's the 17th seed of the top. He's gonna see potentially Marinelli if he goes against Fermato. Uh well Fermato Fermato's tough. Fermato beat him. Fermato beat him in the duel. Really? Yeah, so got a couple App State guys here. Yeah, App State's got guys. They they have seven guys. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, Pretty so good. App State. Ian's doing a great job. John Mark Bentley's doing a great job at App State, and they they, they broke their school record. They're doing an awesome here job. Comes but, Wyatt Miller. Don't yeah, do. Wyatt Miller next, right? Yeah, that's awesome. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go with Marinelli clear to the finals versus Whitlake. All right. Fair and anything can happen. Flip a coin. I'm going to give the ball. I'm going to give the ball it. The ball. All right. 74. Who do you got? You got La- Mikey Labs or Logan Massa? Who do you got clearing that? Let me pull it up here. Well, this is my opinion in this bracket right here. No one touches Mike Kemmer, and Mike no, Kemmer potentially pins his way through the tournament. I will make that prediction right now. Wow. That's my, that's my like one thing of the tournament that's like, oh, you know, if you have to throw a shot out there, that's going to be my like buster of the tournament. I believe in Mike Kemmer. I think he looks unstoppable this year and he is a pinner. So I think he could potentially pin his way through the tournament. You're going to hate my there. guts. You're going to hate my guts. In this prediction. Go for it. <laughs> You're not, are you having him get upset? No, I got cam dog all the way to the no finals. Way. I got Cam Dog over uh, Logan Massa in the semis. But Logan Massa could easily beat him. Just putting it out there. 
I have um, number six seed, Andrew McNally of the Kent State University. Mm-hmm. Upsetting Carter Storacci. Storacci or Storacci, what do you do? Storacci. I say Storacci, but. He says Storacci, didn't he? Uh, everybody says it a different way, I think. Yeah. I didn't cover him personally enough to get the pronunciation from him personally. I got, Mc- I, I got McNally versus Caleb Romero in the semifinals. Yeah, I like that. I like Caleb. You can't. There. You're not going to pick Carter Storacci over. You're going to pick Carter Storacci over Andrew McNally at Kent State every day of the week. Well, yeah. Twice on Sunday. Yeah. So you you like. But. <laughs> you like Storacci, Caleb Romano, which was an overtime match in the dual meet. Uh, yeah, it could go either way, but man, Storacci. You mean Caleb Romero? Is that what you just said? Yeah, Romero. Say Romero? Okay, yeah. yeah. Caleb Romero. Yeah, that's who Storacci I like. Storacci went to OT. But I also, I, you, yeah, you got to go with your Kent guy there, too. That's, yeah, that's an awesome to. thing. I mean, Why not? Just, Why I'm not? obligated. I'm obligated. We're not being paid to make these predictions. Who cares? No, no. I'll there. go with my Kent guy. I'll, I'm going to ride my Kent guy. Yeah, I love that. I li- I'll ride the Kent guy to the finals. Um, knock off Caleb which here's what's crazy about this. He's a cradler. So he's got a, he's got a puncher's chance. Mm-hmm. He's got a chance and all those. So yeah. we'll go with Cam dog over Andrew McNally. Who are you going to go? Cam dog over Strachi? Yeah. Cause that wasn't close. No. And I think, I think Kemmer beats him worse this time. Yeah. Kemmer's Kemmer. a lot to handle for a lot he's of these really guys. Good. He's really he, good. And it's funny seeing how much he's transitioned from freshman year to now. <laughs> That's, just, that was a cool graphic. And, like, he's looked like that his entire high school career, too, with his bright blue knee pads looking like he's, like, 100 pounds, and then he just blows up. Yeah, he's tough. Yeah, yeah. T- I'll take Kemmer. I mean, I feel bad taking a lot of one seeds. I feel like when you go chalk. And I you, know. And you, I feel like it's, like, just lame, and it's not even for good, you know. I know, me too. That's why I was, I was throwing. But, but this is a COVID year. This yeah. is a COVID year, and when you got guys like Spencer Lee, Dayton Fix, and you got guys like Jay Nyerman. You know what I mean? You've like also you, got a guy, You've also got to look at it this way, too. Like, the guys like the Michael Kemmers who haven't won the national championship yet, like, who have been so close. Yes, they could get upset, but he – and I may be thinking about it differently. Like I said, pin your way through the tournament. Sure, I'm not getting paid. I don't care. I'm going to make predictions like that just to make it fun. But – He's just looks like he's on another level to win this year. So it's not that you're picking like the one seed, not that there couldn't be close matches. You're picking the guy that like consistently throughout the year has just been dominant. Like one seed or not, I would have picked him if he was at the freaking four seed. Five right. seed, 10, 10 84, dog. 84. 84. 84 is really, it's really hard. Really hard to pick against Aaron Brooks. I mean, it's really hard because the field – see, yeah. here's, here's what I thought was going to be in that field. I thought that Amin would be at 84 because he's, he's 86. He's 86 kilos, which is like 189. Mm-hmm. So I thought, eh, maybe he'll do 184, you know. Uh, but he's at 97. I thought he would be challenging Aaron Brooks for that, you know, for the 84, but you know, he's up, he's up. Right. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. I, mean, I don't I don't even know who to pick against him. Like Trent Heidley's tough. Um, you mean in the semis? Well, no, well, yeah. well, Trent well, Heidley. You, is- you also have Bolin out of Virginia tech. Who's beaten Heidley all year. So he could potentially be the one to shake things up for Brooks, but I just don't see Brooks doing that. And that's like a blessing for Trent Heidley as well to get there. The prey of Binghamton is the three. Yeah. It's really hard to pick. It's just hard to pick anybody against Aaron Brooks, man. Over him at least. I mean, Trent Heidley's tough though. He raises the roof. He's the hoagie. Yeah. We know. Um, (laughs) I mean, who do you, (laughs) <laughs> Maybe one of the, I like these brawn eagles, the, the the dudes from Illinois. I think they're twins. They're tougher than nails. Yeah. Yeah, that's hard to that's a hard pick to, to go against Hidley. Yeah, I wow. There's a lot more, I feel like it's a it's a sure more of a sh- could be a sure one and two 
at this one than any of the other brackets. Yeah, I would agree with where that. We could have picked a lot more upsets. I think this one you could look at and say, okay, I feel pretty, I feel pretty safe if I had to put money on a one and two. This is who I'd pick. Yeah, that's I'll I'll go with that. Wow, yeah, that that. Whereas that, the other ones, it'd be hard to be putting money on them because there'd be there could be upsets at any of the. Yes. At any point to yes. this up to this weight class, I think. Yeah. Um, okay, you ready for this one? Ninety-seven. Ninety-seven. You ready? Oh, I'm ready. I have Cordell Norfleet in the finals. And I have him taking on, I want to pick AJ Ferrari, but I just, I can't go against an Olympian and a multiple time All-American who's like up a weight, probably just wrestled this year to wrestle. So I will go Cordell Norfleet in the finals versus Miles Amin. Who you got? I got Nino Bona Corsi. I like him too. I do. I think when Nino is wrestling at his best, he is very hard to beat. And I also made a prediction, I think, after the first PWC event when I interviewed Keith Gavin, I said, I'm predicting right now Nino Bonacorski. I think I said national champion caliber contender, national champion contender maybe, but, but I predicted him to the finals. So I'm going to stick with my prediction from the beginning of the year. Even though, yes, okay, Hannah, you sound stupid. Look at all these guys in the bracket. I get it. I don't care. I'm riding with Nino to the finals. All right. I'll go with Heavy. I mean, Heavy's one guy's playing chess. Everybody else is playing, playing checkers. Yeah, I mean, even Colton Schultz, who's, who's really good. He's a good Greco guy. It's just not nobody's going nobody's gonna to stop Gable. Um, are you ready for this though? I will pick Matt Stencil in the finals. Matt Stencil really? pinned Mason Paris in the round okay. of twelve. He pinned Mason Harris and Mason Paris in the round of twelve in Pittsburgh in twenty nineteen. There you go. Okay. All right. You've also seen it happen before, so that's like a rematch. We've seen it happen. I would. Harris beat him three times last year. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's like, just throwing it out there. Yeah. No, no yeah, those but, are the types of things that mess, mess up your mental in these types yeah. of tournaments. I mean, they Mason can. Paris is probably Mason a notch Paris, up on him right now. but Mason Paris has also, in my opinion, stepped up a level from what we've seen that year. This year. I mean, he manhandled Kirkland. Manhandled him. And I think him and Stevenson did that at the Big Ten tournament. They just looked so dominant. But Stevenson's one of those people, too, who um, when I was talking about people that just, like, own that image, he owns it, lives it, breathes it. I He's living his it. gimmick. He's yeah. living his gimmick. Yeah. He is living his gimmick. He created his gimmick. He's here for it. Here's what I'm going to say about the two bookends. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. If they can get on the Olympic team, they're, they're, they're going to get a medal. If they get on the Olympic team, they are gonna get a medal. If 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 Spencer Lee gets on the Olympic team, and if Gable Stevenson gets on the Olympic team, they are both getting medals. They might get bronzes because they get two of them out. But, but I, they'll get medals. I, I they're, agree they're, they're, those guys will medal. Those guys will medal. And here's the thing about that. The other crazy thing about that, and I, it's hard to pick against Wisdowski. Uh, you know, you're gonna have Dave, Dave Bitch. You're gonna have. Gilman in there. You're going to have all these guys at, you know, 57 kilos. That's going to be interesting. But I think if you get those two guys on the team, they win their two out of three, you know, in Dallas and, uh, you know, they make the team. I think both of those guys medal. Yeah. I think that's a good, that's a safe I, thing to say. I, 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 I totally confident. Man, Spencer's good. Spencer's good. Yeah. And I think they're so vested in Spencer. The brands are so vested in him. Mm-hmm. But I don't think he's going to come out and there's just – I don't think – He just has that mentality himself too. Like yeah. he's just one of those people who is just literally tunnel vision 24-7. And you have to respect it. The thing you want to see is... – I want to see it at the national tournament. I want someone to shake it up a little bit for him just because fans would love it. But Spencer Lee is Spencer Lee. Yeah. And he's in his own tier. 
Okay, so him or Gay, who do you pick? Who do you take? Is who's the most dominant wrestlers, the best wrestlers? Is Spencer or is Gable? See, that's what's hard because everyone's looking at it like, well, Gable, better competition, blah, 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 blah. But up until that point, like, how do you not take Spencer? Yeah, you're right. Where he could potentially tech and pin his way through the tournament. Like, he has. <laughs> the like, big thing you, working against now, Spencer, that, though. Any, but if that, that's anyone else, if that was anyone else, you see someone tech and pin their ways potentially to the final. Yes, you give them the o, like the OW. So how do you not is the argument. But I already I already told you. I already told you the chink yeah. in his armor. He can't score third period points. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what do you man. want, Hannah? A guy can't score in the third period. How, what good is he? Here's something for you that you'll actually enjoy. <laughs> Ethan McCoy of Late Robe, who went to Kent State for a while. Yeah. McCoy. One of the closest matches I think he ever had at the Whippy. It uh, wasn't even, it didn't even end up being close, I don't think, at Whippy's in the finals. But Ethan McCoy took him down, and Spencer Lee left the mat crying after he won, or like upset, whatever. And Ethan McCoy was the happiest kid in the world because he was like, I did it. Like, I took him down. I gave him a match. That's the type of thing I want to see the tournament. Just somebody shake it up for him in his game. But I, mean, I don't know. I mean, yeah. second and third period points, and maybe yeah. we'll actually get to see him go up beyond the third period or first yeah. period. It's crazy. Yeah. It's wild stuff. Um, okay. Love I got it. one last thing for you. So you're going to go with Spencer. I'm going to go with Gable. That's fine. I don't, um, I, well, I, I don't know. I think it's hard not to, but I'd like to give it to Gable. Like, how do you not? I don't know. That's a hard one. You No, you 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 just you, but, you went with your argument. I mean, the guy hasn't yeah. gotten to the third period yet. Yeah. Like, it's. He mauls everybody. He pins and texts everybody in the first or second. Everybody, everybody but one dude has made it to the second period this year. You realize that, right? It's, it's absurd. Yes, he's good. Uh, okay, but you're, like you're saying, better competition for Gable. So, hey, and Gable could have Kirk Fleet in the quarters. We, sh we, we should mention that. Yes. But I think Kirk Fleet is not the same Kirk Fleet. I think he's obviously no, and I'm hoping battling some energy, from injuries and some other Fleet things. Big Tens and things like that. I think, you know, next year we're going to see a different him. But this year I think right now Gable, I don't know if anyone's touching Gable that way. I think if Kirk Fleet right would have remained healthy – um, mm -hmm. he would have been a threat to get on the Olympic team. Yeah, he's a bad dude. He's a As big, is yeah. right now, though, no. Yeah. And I don't think he'll win that quarterfinal, match, quarterfinal matchup with Gable. I don't think it'll be close. Yeah. Judging by what I saw with him in Paris at Big Ten. I agree. I think that's fair, yeah? yeah? That's Absolutely. Fair. I think that's okay. a very fair assessment. Okay. Yeah. Just real quick, I want to talk OACs because you're going to be there this weekend. It's going to be – you know, pretty awesome. It's going to be Saturday, Sunday event. We're going to see you probably just Sunday. But what are you looking forward to? You're walking into yet another event. We're going to put you in the deep end with some lead weights and let you figure it out. What are you looking forward to I, at OAC Junior Highs, which is which is it's 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 all the divisions combined. It would be like yeah. had we had all the three divisions at right. one school, you know, and um. It's it's tougher to win the OEC Junior High. This is not uh, Zab. You're not you're an OEC Homer. No, it's literally tougher. It's tougher. It's tougher because it's all one combined yeah. division. Right. What are you looking forward to at OEC's uh, Ohio Athletic Committee Cavelli Center Youngstown Saturday Sunday Junior High 2021 State Tournament? What are you looking forward to, Hannah Mears? Diving in the deep end far this time. First off. When you walk into the high school's tournament, you at least know you're going to talk to some kids who know how to talk to you. They're comfortable talking about themselves. It's less people, like less guys in general. I'm walking into this talking to children who probably don't want to speak to me, um, who want to go see like mom and dad after the match. I don't know a single one of them yet, besides from some of the things just to look at beforehand. But I'm really looking forward to seeing, like you said, every one of these divisions combined or a districts, every one of these districts combined and it's, seeing it's what they have. all divisions. It's, it's Right. It's, yeah. That's what I'm looking forward to a lot because I get to see that in PA. Like I've got to see it. So that's what I'm looking forward to. It's really cool to just see these different levels come together and then to be able to assess later, you know, the different arguments of what you see at a youth level compared to what I've seen here. So I'm, I'm just excited. I'm excited that I'm getting challenged. I think these are going to be – some of the hardest things I've ever covered just because from a perspective, I don't know names and faces. I don't know what to expect from what this tournament looks like and just being there. 
and interviews are so hard with young kids. So it's going to be interesting. So here, here's the deal with this tournament. It's junior high. It's, mm -hmm. it's multiple girls divisions. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there's freshman state. And what's wild about the freshman state is there are kids, there are multiple kids who placed in the freshman state in, in I'm sorry, in the OHSAA state who are showing up to the freshman state. Okay. That's different. Uh, yeah, they just, they just, <laughs> they just went through a meat grinder. They just yeah. went through a meat grinder and they placed in their state, mm -hmm. you know, as, as a, as a high schooler. And now they're putting it all on the line again, right? They're putting yeah. it all on the line again. And I love it. I think it's awesome. I'm excited yeah. for it. I mean, when I look at it, I mean, up and down the line of it, it's awesome. It, it's a great event. It is. Yeah. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm stoked for the event and some of the, the kids who are hitting um, for the first time. It is uh, yeah, it, it's going to be awesome. And uh, I'm just excited about it. And like I said, there's the girls event and that, that would be something I think once again, having you there um, covering Olivia Shore in division three, Ohio, I think that was, that was huge. I think that was really awesome. Yeah, I loved that. I loved yeah. that. At one point, we like I talked to her and I was like, we were like, oh, this is like our comfort zone. Like, this is kind of cool. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it was sweet. And to get her to see her compete there, I'm excited to see what else Ohio has. I've never got to really cover a, a female event, period. Yeah, so it'll be an all female event. It'll be on its own mats and have its own its own session. And they yeah. do a great job at OEC. And hey, hey, we're in an arena. We're in an arena. There we go. And they really could have made that special last week if they had yeah. just gone to this arena right but um but is what it is COVID. yeah i know my wife's like you gotta get over it man not to see sports happen at this level it's yeah okay. <laughs> my wife was she was yeah she hey what was your yeah. favorite moment what was your favorite moment at the uh what was your favorite moment what did you like the most about covering the ohio state tournament what was your favorite moment of Han Han Mears? um that's hard okay my favorite moment hmm well I, I said Trey Allen the interview with his mom was my favorite moments I thought it was just like the purest form of like emotion that you can get from somebody after something like that and so like you crave that as a journalist and as someone covering things love that Olivia Shore's headlock it literally was the match to like start the entire competition and I that was I would say that had to be one of my favorite moments I know it just because like oh Olivia Shore and what she did no it was because that was my first match sitting there filming my first taste of what this the weekend was going to be like and it started off like that and I was like okay let's go like this is gonna be awesome so I think those two things really really probably put me in the mood of like oh this is this is pretty sweet i feel like i'm at home now because this is like the stuff i want to see happen in the sport she woke you up yeah she, she woke the woke gym that. up with that she woke the gym up i think yeah, i tweeted, awesome. might have even tweeted that yeah that, that was so, awesome uh, yeah, okay a lot, of, a lot of good moments but i i think there were just some really cool little things that happened here and there throughout that were that were just really special so, all right javon yarborough is in the freshman division 98 pounds Mm -hmm. He weighed in at the state tournament at 94 pounds last week. And he took seventh in the state as a freshman at 94 pounds at 106. <laughs> He's there this weekend wrestling 98 in the freshman division. Good for him, man. How awesome is that? Awesome. And then the other one in that division is Max Shulaw. Mm -hmm. Took fourth in D2 Ohio at 195. He's your number one seed at the in the freshman. Okay. And then hold on, hold on. I want to look at the girls' division real quick. Because yeah, I don't I, even have these pulled up right now, so I'm trying. No, no, no. Don't worry about it. I'm just, I'm, I'm just dropping knowledge here. I'm dropping knowledge. Um, girls junior high, the girls junior high. They got some round robins. The numbers aren't huge, but um, I'm looking to see. I'm looking to see. There's one that I'm really looking for. Oh, girls junior high. Oh, hold on. Hold on. I'm seeing if I can get to the correct weight. Here we go. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. You're going to get to see her. 82 pounds, D2 girls, Talia Guntram. All right. There That's you great. go. 
quite a few times. I'm excited. Uh, this won't be close, just so you know. <laughs> um, picking this bracket is nothing like picking any of those NCAA brackets, even the 125 with Spencer Lee and heavyweight with, uh, with Gable. Gable. She, like, she's more of a favorite than either one of those guys. Just put Just put that in your brain right now. Like, she is really good. All right. I'm really good. It. Like if it if she is if they haven't sanctioned wrestling in Ohio by the time she's even a freshman, she'll be a state place as a freshman. Wow. Yeah. No, she's really good. She's really good. She's really good. All so right. hey, you'll get to see her this weekend. So, You're gonna be all there, all making it happen, doing your Hannah thing. Do you have anything else for me? Oh hey. Uh <laughs> Welcome to adult life. You just spent your St. Patrick's Day doing a <laughs> yeah, wait, pause. I hope you know I worked all day and you texted me, are you partying? I went and saw my grandparents and was like playing with my dog and came home and did this. Like adult life is consumed has consumed me already. Yeah, you're, <laughs> like, you're I didn't you're even have a drink adult life. today. I didn't even take a drink today. Hey, listen to this. Wait until you start having if you have a Tommy or a Ferdy, you'll <laughs> hopefully not for a while <laughs> yeah things will get real interesting Let's okay real quick this be like all right Dad, whoa. <laughs> real quick shout out shout out to defense okay the ow kits for the outstanding wrestlers yes awesome okay we had three bars of oatmeal or we had a bar of oatmeal a bar of peppermint bar of original we had body wash original we had pep original they brought the state tournament to you. They brought Hannah Mears to you. <laughs> oh, we see you. We'll bring Hannah Mears Thank to you. you. <laughs> Hannah Mears, do you have anything else for me on the Barbarian Hour tonight? Do you have any other bold predictions, uh, things to say about Pennsylvania, Ohio, NCAA <laughs> wrestling, OAC wrestling, girls wrestling, boys wrestling? No, I just – I. I want to be involved in the sport as much as I can. I'm looking to never thought I'd want to completely be able to make a, a career out of it. But now that it's becoming more possible, I'm here for it. And this is how it's happening is being thrown in the deep end, predicting NCAA brackets, things like this that I'm just consistently trying to work at and get better at and be a better mind in the sport. But I want to bring you as much content as I possibly can. So Zeb, thank you for always challenging me, throwing me out there. I'm trying to do the best that I can from my perspective and shake things up in the wrestling world, but I want to be a part of it. I want to be here. So thank you for letting me.